I just see a lot of people who say hi. Man. If you can please proceed to find your seats and turn your cell phones on silent, we're going to get started very briefly here. Please take your seats. We have just a few more people coming in. As soon as they're seated, we are going to start. Thank you. If I could ask you again to please be sure that your cell phones are on silent. My name is Rhonda Campbell and I am Chief Justice Todd's Chief Judicial Administrative Assistant. It's a big title. <laughs> Thank you all for coming today to be with us on this wonderful occasion. I would now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Justice Todd's college roommate and dear friend, concert pianist Robin Malloy Goldsby for the prelude.
All rise. The judges of the Superior and Commonwealth Courts of Pennsylvania, the United States District Courts of Pennsylvania, the Courts of Common Pleas of Pennsylvania, and the Magisterial District Courts, and the deans and faculty of the University of Pittsburgh School of Law, the Thomas R. Klein School of Law of Duquesne University, and the Villanova University Charles Widger School of Law.
the Honorable the Justices of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, The Honorable Chief Justice Emeritus Thomas G. Saylor presiding. Oh yay, oh yay, oh yay. All persons having business before this court may now appear and they shall be heard. God save the Commonwealth and this honorable court. Please remain standing for the Pennsylvania State Police Ceremonial Unit. Finally, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance led by McKenna Fusell, a senior at the University of Southern Mississippi Honors College and granddaughter of Steve and Deborah Todd, and remain standing for the national anthem sung by Commander Richard Manning of the Allegheny County Sheriff's Office. Please join me in saying, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land
Thank you. Please be seated. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to welcome everyone to this special session of the Supreme Court, convened for the purpose of formally inducting the Honorable Deborah Todd as Chief Justice of Pennsylvania. This occasion is particularly momentous as she becomes the first woman to occupy this high office in the court's long history now entering its 301st year. Having served, <laughs> having served with uh, Chief Justice Todd for many years and having been the beneficiary of her wise counsel, I can assure that she will lead the court into this new era with distinction and dignity. I will now, I will now uh, recognize uh, Jeff Moulton, the state court administrator. Uh, Jeff came to this important position uh, well prepared, having previously served as a judge on the Pennsylvania Superior Court and as the first appointed counsel to the Supreme Court. Jeff. Thank you, Chief Justice Emeritus Saylor. On behalf of the Administrative Office of Pennsylvania Courts, I would like to extend my welcome to all of you on this historic occasion. As Justice Saylor said, Chief Justice Todd is the first female Chief Justice in our Supreme Court's 300-year history. And other, as others have been heard to say, it's about time. <laughs> I know this moment means a great deal to so many people, including, I will say, court, court employees at AOPC and throughout the Commonwealth. As you can see, we have a power-packed program here today, as is appropriate to the occasion. Uh, I've been assigned the task of keeping everything on track and on time. So if the speakers stick within their assigned time limits, time limits we should finish at a reasonable time. If not, we may be here for a long time. I think you know who you are. Um, <laughs> so for the speakers, I just have a bit of housekeeping. When you're on deck to speak, please be ready to come up uh, to the podium quickly. We can't afford to be like the Academy Awards when it takes what seems like forever to somebody, somebody to scoot through everybody else and come up. Um, on the subject of the Oscars, we made the decision not to use their lovely Time's Up music. So uh, instead, what we're going to do um, is if you see me inching up towards the podium, that means you're nearly out of time. Uh, if I put my hand on your shoulder, that is not a sign of warm affection. It means your time is up. So with those dire warnings out of the way, it's time for our invocation, which is to be delivered by Pastor Ronald Brown of the Hope Lutheran Church in Cranberry Township. Pastor Brown, I promise not to interrupt you. So. Let us pray. Lord of all, you have declared what is right, to seek justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. As your people, you call us to honor those in authority. We lift before you today those who govern the great commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You place in their hands the solemn duty of participating in the shaping of our government. We pray for our governor, the senators, the representatives, and judges, 
that they do their work wisely, making decisions for our common life, serving our neighbors in our local communities. Give our leaders the wisdom to enact laws and regulations that foster an environment where every citizen can flourish spiritually, socially, and physically. We pray especially today for the Honorable Chief Justice Deborah McCloskey Todd, who has answered your call to serve. In her office as the 58th Chief Justice of Pennsylvania, give her the spirit of wisdom that she may perceive the truth and administer the law as an instrument of your divine will. May she defend the oppressed and protect the virtuous. Give to our Chief Justice the support and strength she needs to fulfill her duties so that she may be a blessing and a source of inspiration to her fellow justices, those under her charge, and especially to the people whom she serves. Protect and watch over her and all those who give of themselves daily in service towards others. May she and all those who govern this great state do their work well as an act of service to you. And all this we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Brown. Chief Justice Todd and all of us here are particularly honored to have with us today a man who really needs no introduction, the 48th governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro. Thank you. Thank you. Needs no introduction is just a kind way of moving the program along <laughs> quickly. I will endeavor to be brief, Madam Chief Justice, so as to not feel the arm of Jeff Moulton on my shoulder. <laughs> I want to thank you all for being here and pay special recognition to Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, McKeesport's own Austin Davis, who is with us here. And of course, it's an honor to be standing before the women and men of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, as well as the other judges who are with us today. I mean no disrespect to you judges to refer to you as other judges, but when you're standing here with the Supreme Court, that is, I think, the proper way to address you. I also just want to say a special thanks uh, to the staff who's here from the late Chief Justice Max Baer. I know we all hold Max in our hearts today, and may his memory be a blessing. We all know that our courts uphold the rule of law and safeguard our democratic ideals. A strong judiciary is critical to having a strong democracy. The Pennsylvania State Supreme Court has proudly upheld that tradition for more than 300 years, the oldest appellate court in the nation. They continue that tradition today as we write the next chapter in their story and make some history in the process. I am proud to be here today with Madam Chief Justice Todd. <laughs> and fittingly to be not in our state capital, but in Madam Chief Justice's hometown. A graduate of Chatham College and later the University of Pittsburgh Law School, she is Western Pennsylvania through and through, a hard worker, a fighter. She's got that steel worker sensibility, certainly from her dad. And she is a distinguished public servant. The chief has made Pennsylvania better through her wisdom, her leadership, and most importantly, her heart. The chief really cares. I've come to know her through her elder justice work, where you see not just the wisdom of her ways, but the big heart she has. She indeed listens with her heart. Deborah Todd swearing in today is not just making history, it's also inspiring the next generation of leaders. Women and young girls in Pennsylvania need leaders that they can look up to in our justice system and beyond. As a father to a young woman, Thank you. Your example is inspiring to girls who answer the call to public service, like my own daughter, Sophia, who is with us today. 
It was an honor just three days ago to be sworn in as the 48th governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania by Chief Justice Deborah Todd. And as I was up there, I was, I was feeling the weightiness of the moment, a bit overcome by emotion. And I was feeling the heaviness of the burden that was about to be bestowed upon me until the chief stood up to give me the oath of office. Her smile and her rendition of an otherwise pretty straightforward oath <laughs> immediately took the pressure off the moment. And it allowed me to just enjoy and relax for a moment. She made me feel comfortable, comfortable at that spot. That's the Todd effect. <laughs> to, bring, to bring a sense of realness, Chief, if that's even a word, realness to the bench as she does to each big moment that she appears in. She allows those around her or across from her to be their best, to find the best inside themselves because they know they are before Chief Justice Todd. And so as the court enters its 301st year of meaningful work, let it positively be impacted by the Todd effect as we make history here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And so, Chief Justice Todd, to you and your fellow justices, May wisdom and the pursuit of justice continue to guide the work that you all do each and every day. I am proud to be the governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, particularly because I have the honor of serving in government with all of you. Thank you, God bless you, and I wish you the very best. Thank you, Governor. Truly a leader by example. Thank you very much for your remarks. Um, Chief Justice Todd is honored, and we are all honored, honored here today, to have so many federal and state judges joining us for this historic event. These include Chief Judge Mark Hornack and the judges of the United States District Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania, President Judge Jack Pinella, and current and former judges of the Superior Court of Pennsylvania, President Judge Renee Cohn Jubilee, and current and former judges of the Commonwealth. Court of Pennsylvania. We also have a host of president judges of the Courts of Common Pleas and the president judge of the Municipal Court of Philadelphia. And that sea of robes we have in the middle of the room also includes countless judges of both our Courts of Common Pleas and our magisterial district courts, including, including Kim Ber President Judge Kim Berkeley-Clark of Allegheny County, plus virtually her entire bench is here. So thank you very much. Um, we also welcome retired Chief Justice of Pennsylvania, Ronald Castile, and, <laughs> and retired Justices Sandra Schultz Newman, Seamus McCaffrey, and Cynthia Baldwin, as well as former Justice and President Judge Emeritus of the Superior Court, Coriel Stevens. So thank you all so much for being here. So at this time, please welcome Alexandra Todd, morning TV anchor of, the, of Dakota News Now, and the daughter of Stephen Deborah Todd to provide a greeting from the family. Well, it's a tough act to follow the governor, but I'm going to try. Good afternoon. I bring you greetings from the entire Todd family and extend our sincere thanks to our many friends who have helped my mother achieve this milestone in her career. So thank you all for just being here. We are, like we've been saying, are witnessing history today, the first female Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania in over 300 years. Wow. We are finally here. My family and I have waited for this day for a very long time. My mother, Deborah McCloskey Todd, is my idol, 
and my hero, I aspire to be one-tenth of how amazing, successful, and kind she is. She started her journey in Elwood City, Pennsylvania. In fact, she was recently inducted into the Lincoln High School Hall of Fame. <laughs> She tried out for the circus and got accepted. <laughs> We're glad she didn't go that route because she is making a difference here for the women in this state to truly show how a woman can succeed in anything she puts her heart into. My mom has always told me, nice girls can get the corner office. implying that you do not have to be ruthless to climb to the top of any career. She has instilled in me so many important things, but number one has always been to be kind. She and her two sisters are angels on this earth, Nancy Woods and Mary Johnston, who spread joy and light wherever they go. I feel lucky to be in the same family as them because I am inspired by them every single day. We have hit some roadblocks and bumps along the way to this amazing day, but none we could not overcome. When I was five years old, Steve Todd, my father, and I began handing out emery boards, flyers, pins, sweatshirts, mugs, and putting up signs campaigning for my mom at countless county fish fries, spaghetti dinners, and a million other events but it has all been so worth it to watch her shine extra bright today. My father has been the backbone of our family. I have always admired how he supports my mother in a myriad of ways. When my mom did not win Superior Court race the first time by one half of a percent, she felt defeated. It was my father who told her to never give up. I didn't know it at the time, but I do know now that their love and support for each other have been unmatched by any love story. I truly hope to have what they have one day. They are such a powerful team, and I am lucky and blessed to have been part of the journey to help her get here today. She will thank the countless wonderful Pennsylvanians who helped her in every campaign from her office and all 67 counties. We know them really well. <laughs> I think the best way to describe my mom and dad really is humility. My mother loves to let others shine. She has left events early to take phone calls in the middle of meetings to help me. She has never stopped being a mom. She has always put her family first her entire life. You should know that your first female Chief Justice of Pennsylvania is a fantastic singer. She has danced and performed in numerous theatrical productions. She is hilarious and loves to make others laugh. The fact that she is also the most intelligent and strong person I know is truly a cherry on top. Well, I can't say enough positive things about her. If I tried, we would be here forever. But I can say that Pennsylvania is in perfect hands. I love you, Mom. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you so much. In addition to daughter Alexandra, we are honored to have a very large contingent of family members here that I want to recognize, starting, as he's already been mentioned, uh, the Chief Justice's husband, Attorney Steve Todd, their son, Dr. Jason Todd, their granddaughter, McKenna Fusell, who we heard earlier recite the pledge, uh, the Todd's de facto daughter and former au pair, Maria Zaparenko and her fiance, Dara O'Malley, sisters and brothers-in-law, Mary and Bruce Johnston, and Nancy and Jim Woods, their niece, Dr. Emily Summers, their nephews, Jeffrey Woods, Jim Woods and his wife, Laura, their great niece, Julia Woods, and their great nephew, Quinn Summers. I also want to welcome the extended family, including the Hollerman and Swagger families, as well as the Chief Justice's classmates from Lincoln High School, Chatham College, and Pitt Law School. Again, many thanks to all of you for participating in this historic event. And now, please welcome Dr. Andy, Andrew Masich, President and CEO of the Smithsonian Affiliated Heinz History Center in Pittsburgh, to provide the address honoring today's historic installation. Dr. Masich.
Madam Chief Justice, honored guests, and may it please the court. I'm honored to be the designated historian today because this is an historic occasion. It's an historic moment in time. The installation of Deborah Todd as Chief Justice of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, the first woman ever to serve as Chief Justice of this distinguished body. It's especially significant in that the Pennsylvania Supreme Court is one of the most important and admired judicial bodies in the history of the United States. Its influence is, in fact, been worldwide. It's altogether fitting and proper that we gather here in one of Pittsburgh's grand hotels, named for William Penn, the founder of our Commonwealth. It's wonderful to see so many robed people in one place. <clears throat> Robes are, are uniforms. Uh, they identify the wearer uh, with an institution or, or group. Judicial robes have an even deeper meaning. Here in America, judicial robes initially fell by the way as too ostentatious and, well, too British. Thomas Jefferson opined that uh, the gaudy, colorful robes of, uh, of Great Britain, the ornate wigs that made him think of rats peering out of <laughs> bunches of oakum, were inappropriate for uh, a republic such as ours. In 1801, U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Marshall began wearing a simple black robe, unadorned. Soon other justices and judges around the country followed suit. Sandra Day O'Connor, the first woman to serve as a Supreme Court justice, noted that every federal and state judge in the country wears a very similar simple black robe, which symbolizes all that judges, all judges, are engaged in upholding the Constitution and the rule of law. The installation of a chief justice is never an ordinary affair. For chief justices are rare creatures indeed. Only 57 have been seated in the more than 300 year history of the Pennsylvania court. This installation represents a special and historic milestone. Deborah Todd will be the very first woman to assume this highly esteemed and honorable position. It should be noted here that some, some scholars debate how many chief justices have there been since 1681 here in Pennsylvania. Our late chief justice, the Honorable Max Baer, delved into this matter and discovered that the first chief justice, William Crispin, died at sea before he reached America's shores. Should he be counted? <laughs> Chief Justice Baer calculated that if Crispin was not counted, he would be number 56. If Crispin was counted, Baer would be number 57. Well, Max was Pittsburgh born and raised, and here we take Heinz's 57 varieties very seriously. <laughs> Yenzers, they say, bleed ketchup. So Max Baer became Pennsylvania's 57th Chief Justice. Perhaps some historical perspective is in order. It's true that under William Penn's proprietorship of Pennsylvania since the 1680s, there had been a provincial court system. But it wasn't until 1722 that a Supreme Court, independent of the control of the royal governor, was established. From the beginning, William Penn envisioned a colony on this continent that would become, as he said, the seed of a nation. The court system and the Supreme Court that evolved in his commonwealth became the seed and model for appellate courts in America and beyond. Life wasn't easy for those early Supreme Court justices. All of them were men of known integrity and ability who were required to be both physically as well as mentally fit as they rode circuit across the sylvan hills and valleys of the vast province of Pennsylvania. 
the Supreme Court then provided both trial and appellate services. These early justices broke new trails, literally and legally. When the American Revolution came, the Pennsylvania Constitution of 1776 provided the model for other states. And after independence, the framers of the United States Constitution saw the Pennsylvania Supreme Court as the prototype for the US Supreme Court. The founders weren't just winging it. They searched far and wide for precedents for successful democracies. Franklin, Adams, and Jefferson found the purest forms close to home. They much admired the governance of the centuries-old Iroquois Confederation, six Native American tribes which divided power between judicial, legislative, and executive authorities. The Iroquois Confederacy's constitution was known as the Great Law of Peace. It didn't serve as the singular model for the founder's vision, but the power and simplicity of the Iroquois law guaranteed personal freedoms while maintaining a strong union of tribes. This no doubt inspired our founders. Pennsylvania's Supreme Court evolved over time. It became an appellate court, the court of last resort. Over the years, its justices have been influenced by the norms and exigencies of the day. In turn, the court influenced the people and values of our commonwealth. In 1883, legal trailblazer Caroline Burnham Kilgore became Pennsylvania's first woman law school graduate and the first woman admitted to the Pennsylvania bar. In 1896, justices broke with centuries of precedent and became one of the first courts in the nation to allow women to practice law and argue before the Supreme Court. At the same time, women's suffrage movements were gaining momentum across the nation. Surely women were citizens under the Constitution, but in the eyes of the law, they did not have the rights equal to those of men. In 1920, the 19th Amendment to the US Constitution finally gave women the right to vote. In time, circuit riding became impractical. The Pennsylvania justices still wanted to represent all the people of the Commonwealth, so they began deliberating in chambers in Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Harrisburg. The grandest of these courtrooms was in Harrisburg in the new state capitol complex. It was designed to house the executive, legislative, and judicial branches of government. In a bold and controversial leap, the legislature contracted with an extraordinary woman artist. Violet Oakley would adorn with historical and allegorical murals the chambers of all three branches of government, but the Supreme Court chamber would be Oakley's final and most celebrated commission. She illuminated the walls of the chamber as if they were giant pages torn from medieval or Renaissance manuscripts. During their deliberations, the Supreme Court justices would be surrounded by the 16 murals revealing the history of the law, from divine law to natural law, rational law, Hebrew and Christian law, English common law, state and national law, and the spirit of the law. When Oakley was finishing up the murals in the Supreme Court chambers, she thought she saw William Penn watching her. She turned to meet his gaze and he doffed his hat as if to say, thank you for recognizing my vision and faithfully expressing the ideals of peaceful society. Oakley began her Supreme Court murals in 1920, the same year that women voted for the first time. However, the path of acceptance of women jurists proved difficult and not for the faint of heart. They overcame patriarchal legal systems in law school, government, in law firms, and in courts. Few of these early women pioneers had role models or anyone to advise them on how to juggle their personal 
and professional lives. It was not until 1930 that Sarah Sofel became Pennsylvania's first female judge, appointed right here in Allegheny uh, Court of Common Pleas. In 1961, Governor David L. Lawrence appointed Annex Alpern, the first woman to serve as a Pennsylvania Supreme Court Justice. A University of Pittsburgh law school graduate, Alpern was also the first woman to serve as a city solicitor for a major American city, and she was the first to serve as Pennsylvania's Attorney General, first woman, in fact, in the nation. Today, 30% of Pennsylvania's active judges are women. Three of the seven Supreme Court justices are women. Christine Donahue and Sally Mundy have joined Deborah on the bench. An astounding 71% of the Superior Court judges and 67% of the Commonwealth Court judges are women. It's hard for us to even imagine the challenges overcome by these pioneering women. Too few know the trials and tribulations of our forebears and our beginnings as a nation and as a commonwealth. In fact, only four out of 10 Americans today know enough basic history and civics to pass the citizenship test, the very test that the US Citizenship and Immigration Service administers to new citizens. About a, a quarter of those 100 test questions relate to the judicial branch and the law. Questions like, what does the judicial branch do? What is the supreme law of the land? What do we call the first 10 amendments? And what is the rule of law? Those of you who have dedicated your, your career and the days of your life to public service, the law, and the interpretation of our constitutions would be dismayed to learn that most Americans don't even know what the three branches of government are. As educators and civic leaders, we have our work cut out for us as the 250th anniversary of our nation approaches in 2026. Shortly after Christmas in 1753, young George Washington trekked to this place here at the confluence of the Allegheny, Monongahela, and Ohio rivers. We now call it Pittsburgh. In Washington's time, it was known simply as the Forks of the Ohio. The governor of Virginia, Robert Dinwiddie, had tasked the 21-year-old Washington with confronting the French who also claimed these lands. But before Washington passed the point at the confluence of the three rivers, he made certain to pay his respects to Queen Aliquippa, an Iroquois sachem, a Seneca, who held sway over the Delawares, Shawnees, and the European traders who dared exchange their wares in the western wilds. Aliquippa was the keeper of law and order and dispenser of justice here in the West. This wise and powerful woman impressed Washington, who worried that his gifts of a blanket coat and a bottle of rum were not adequate for a leader of Aliquippa's stature. Today, the town of Aliquippa stands near the site of Logstown, where the woman Sachem once held court. Some 200 years later, 20 miles north of Aliquippa, in Elwood City, <laughs> Deborah Todd was born. Perhaps an unseen torch was passed from one great woman leader to another. Others will speak more of her career and service to the Commonwealth. Suffice it for me to say that she was born and raised in Pennsylvania and is truly a leader of, by, and for the people. She is only the second woman to be elected to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Today, we recognize Madam Chief Justice Deborah Todd as she follows the distinguished chief justices who have preceded her, all 57 of them. Her leadership is sure to be characterized by the intelligence, practicality, wit, compassion, and congeniality that have been hallmarks of her career. 
I know that the citizens and elected officials, lawyers and jurists, wish her only the best as she makes history in her role as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, the court of last resort and the oldest and most admired such body in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Masich. Uh, I want to mention that the sea of robes in the back is not confined to judges, but we have a lot of academic regalia here as well. And Chief Justice Todd's honored to have the deans and faculty from the following law schools with her today. Dean Amy Wildermuth and members of the law faculty of the University of Pittsburgh School of Law. Dean April Barton and members of the law faculty of the Thomas R. Klein School of Law of Duquesne University. And Mark Alexander of the Villanova University Charles Widger School of Law. Thank you all for so much for being here. We are also honored to have many public officials with us here today, and I'm going to recognize those that I have on my list. Um, in the full knowledge that I will manage to leave someone out, and I please accept my apologies for that in advance. From the executive branch, in, in addition to, uh, to our governor, we have Lieutenant Governor Austin Davis, we have the 46th Governor of the Commonwealth, Tom Corbett, and we have Acting Attorney General Michelle Henry. All thank you very much for being here. We have, this, from the state legislature, we have Speaker of the House Mark Rossi, Democratic Leader Senator Jay Costa, Representatives Dan Frankel, Anita Kulik, and Latasha Mays. We have Senators Lindsey Williams and Sharif Street, and we have former Speaker of the House Mike Terzai. Thank you all for being here. We have county officials here as well. From Allegheny County, we have County Executive Rich Fitzgerald, District Attorney Steve Zapala. Sheriff Kevin Krause, Chief Deputy Sheriff John Kearney, and Controller Corey O'Connor. Thank you for being here, Allegheny County. From Butler County, from Butler County, we have all three county commissioners, Kevin Boozle, Kimberly Geyer, and Leslie Oshie, as well as Register of Wills and Clerk of Orphans Court, Sarah Edwards, and Sheriff Mike Sloop. From Lackawanna County, District Attorney Mark Powell, and from Lawrence County, Commissioners Dan Vogler and Loretta Spielvogel. Thank you all so much for being here, and I, I apologize to anybody else I've missed. Thank you very much. <laughs> On the subject of public officials, I now want to welcome to the podium Councilman Bobby Brown, representing District 1 of the City of Philadelphia, to read a proclamation. Councilman Brown. That's all right. I'm not Councilman Brown. I'm uh, Councilman Bobby Wilson. I'm the representative for District 1 in the city of Pittsburgh, which represents the North Side Strip District, half of downtown now, uh, including this William Penn Hotel. Uh, on that note, I actually thought I was going to speak first, but that's OK. Uh, no, this, it's quite an honor to be up here, and uh, especially during this time uh, in our, in our uh, country's um, uh, situation right now, especially with this great moment that we get to uh, recognize uh, such um, such a great individual uh, and such a great local individual. Now, being a Pitt alumni, I really uh, I really appreciate um, you know being a fellow Pitt graduate and standing uh, here and and seeing you, uh, Chief. Uh, Justice Todd in this in this high position and just to recognize the ascension uh, at this moment I really really it's a it's an honor to be here and to be before uh, all the other justices as well I want to thank uh, Judge Alan Hertzberger uh, Judge Alan Hurt well in terms of messing up names uh, Judge Alan Hertzberg uh, on behalf of uh, the alumni community uh, uh, you know I appreciate uh, him uh, coming to my office, and we had a good laugh about his times in city council. Uh, that was quite a, a difference, but um, no, he, you know, he came to my office, and we 
sat together and figured out how we could, um, you know, recognize this moment um, for not only the the Pitt, the Pitt alumni community, um, but also, uh, you know, just the the just the fact of the matter how how great this is. So. With that, we did write up a crop proclamation. I have to thank Chief Justice Todd's chambers for working with my office. It's, it's been a pleasure. And I thank my office for putting this all together as well. Now, it's a good thing we had a historian here because they went over all the great uh, history of that. And I don't think I can make that uh, transition from Aliquippa to, to Elwood City. Uh, but, uh, you know, so we did want to put it all into record, though, of all the great achievements that the Chief Justice Todd has, has accomplished and the, most of the history uh, that was stated previously. So I won't go over all that because that's already been very much uh, covered. But whereas Chief Justice Todd is only the second woman elected to the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania and is today the first female Supreme Court Justice in the 300-year history of this oldest appellate court in the United States of America. And therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh congratulates and celebrates the Honorable Deborah McCloskey Todd for her extraordinary commitment to, the, to public service and her historic appointment as Chief Justice of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. And therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of, the, of, of, the, of Pittsburgh declares Friday, January 20th, 2023 to be the Honorable Chief Justice Deborah McCloskey Todd Day here in our city of Pittsburgh. Good one. I don't have a comeback. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Wilson, uh, for those remarks and for Deborah Todd Day. How exciting! How exciting! Um, next up, we have a longtime friend of uh, Deborah and Steve Todd, Attorney Jerry Lawrence grandson, I believe, of the governor who appointed the first woman to the Supreme Court. Jerry Lawrence. Thank you, Jeff. I think with a little work, I can get you some work doing this in California, maybe. Uh, Madam Chief Justice, members of the court, it's my privilege to today congratulate and honor the Chief Justice by sharing some stories that show her many special qualities. Those who have experienced it know that a judicial campaign is not about luxury motor coaches and large traveling parties. The judicial campaign involves the candidate traveling with maybe one staff person or a family member, sometimes traveling alone to go to often small gatherings where they have a few moments to show their superior legal acumen, their great intellect, and do it all while being charismatic and charming. It's grueling, it's exhausting. The highs and lows bring out the best and the worst, but they reveal true A couple of moments today to tell you some of those stories that talk about and exhibit the great character of the Chief Justice. I met the Chief Justice prior to the 19... 97 campaign, when she was, as the coffee mug said, the superior choice for superior court. <laughs> the voters didn't think so that year, but two years later they did. <laughs> and I remember a, 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 a very poignantly a telephone call we had the day after the 2005 retention election when I said, you know, it's a great opportunity on the horizon. And through all that time over those years, I spent a lot of time meeting up with Deborah and Deborah and Rhonda, Deborah and sometimes Alex, Deborah and Steve, outside of airports or hotels, going to meetings and experiencing those many campaign moments that reveal who you are and what you're about. Here's a few of those moments. Most of you know judges can't fundraise and that task falls to others. During 
the Chief Justice's first race, you couldn't electronic fundraise the way you do now, so everything involved checks. And that created this problem of how do you timely get the checks back to home base to get them deposited and cashed and timely spent. And I remember dropping Deborah at the airport in Philadelphia late one night for the last flight back to Pittsburgh, and I had an envelope, and I didn't tell her what was in the envelope, and I didn't tell her being a courier isn't part of fundraising, it's being a courier. But she looked at me and she said, I don't want that. She said very tersely to me, I never bend the rule. And that's one of the Chief Justice's best qualities. She's the highest integrity and respect for the law that we saw in that moment, that I've seen from her at every moment since then. On another occasion, this time in 2007, outside the Marriott in Philadelphia, I met her and Steve, and I started getting some luggage out of the, out of the back of the Suburban with Steve. And there were these two boxes, and I thought, you know, what are they going to do with these two banker boxes of stuff? It's 10 o'clock at night. They're leaving first thing in the morning. And she said, wait, wait, wait. I need those boxes. That's my homework. The then Superior Court judge says, I'm a judge on the busiest court in the United States. I don't go back to the hotel early to get sleep. I do my work while you're out smoking cigars with your buddies. <laughs> the, the Chief Justice's work ethic and diligence is beyond compare. You know, final story reveals perhaps the most important part of the Chief Justice's character. It's familiar to those of you who were here in 2008 because I told it then. And I think those who closely read her opinions see her, how her compassion, her kindness, and her empathy balance out her no-nonsense approach. But it was manifest, and I saw it, on a cold street corner, Philadelphia's Market Street. After her ringing telephone had gone several times unanswered, it was that catchy special tune that lets you know it was Alex that was calling, I knew the meeting we were in was going to end really quickly. And as we got down to the street, she took out her phone, and this is pre-iPhone, so it was those old phones that had like little pictures, and she held it very closely, and she examined this most important piece of evidence I think she'd ever looked at in any case to settle a very, very important issue, and that was what shoes were going to best match Alex's dress for the fall dance? <laughs> well, you know, the, the importance, the care, the diligence, and her tender conversation with Alex affirmed what was then one of her television commercials. The tagline of that commercial was, it's about time for a wife and mother to serve on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. And it really has been and continues to be. You know, detractors have long said that Pennsylvania's system of elected judges is broken. You can't look at the Chief Justice and say that. You can't look at this bench and say that. That system, that collective odyssey that you experience when you start here in the 14th War Democratic Club, and then you go to the fish fries, and you travel across the state, and back in the, back in the day, you'd end in Marge Tartaglione's basement in the 62nd Ward in Philadelphia. <laughs> that process has the intended effect because it reveals great character. It reveals Judge Todd's great character. It lets the cream rise. It permits the voters to do what they most often do, and that is to make the right choice. Another of the Chief Justice's 2007 television commercials stressed the virtues that are very important to her character. And she talked about, and this is the quote from the commercial, the importance of hard work, the value of faith, and the difference between right and wrong. From my own experience, and as we've all experienced in her many years on the bench, we know those things to be true. Madam Chief Justice, again, congratulations. God bless you. God bless the Commonwealth. Thank you, Jerry. And uh, somewhat out of order from the program, uh, next we have the Honorable Mary Jane Bowes, Superior Court Judge and President of the University of Pittsburgh School of Law Alumni Association. Judge Bowes. Madam Chief Justice, doesn't that sound great? May it please this honorable court. On behalf of the University of Pittsburgh Law Alumni Association, our valued faculty and our esteemed Dean Amy Wildermuth, 
it is with high honor and great privilege that I speak about our alumna, my former colleague, and now boss, but still my friend, Deborah Todd. <laughs> At Pitt Law, we encourage our students to apply themselves diligently to the study of law, to evince the highest values of integrity and professionalism, and to find their unique role in advancing the cause of justice. Deborah Todd has done all that. The alumni, alumni of Pitt Law are exceedingly grateful that she chose our school for her legal education. While there, Deborah excelled as a student, was named to Law Review, authored two publications, interned at the district attorney's office, and served as a research assistant. After achieving success at Pitt Law, she began her career at U.S. Steel and soon developed a reputation as a renowned civil litigator handling major complex litigation. While her legal career was a culmination of a long-held dream, her true destiny lay beyond the practice of law, but in the judiciary. I think we would all agree that while the legal profession is a demanding one, the judiciary is demanding in its own way. But the person we are celebrating here today made it all look easy. Deborah dissected the briefs, untangled the law, devised an apt approach, and crafted a writing that was crisp, clear, concise, and convincing. Preeminent jurist Ruggiero Aldisert once observed that if a judge wants to write clearly and cogently, the judge must first think clearly and cogently. Judge Todd hit the mark. Her finished product was so logical that it seemed to write itself, but we all know the difficulty and long hours that went into it. Judge Todd did it flawlessly, employing her high intellect, her boots on the ground experience as a seasoned litigator, and her graceful rising. When it came to opinions by Judge Todd, the issues were hard, but the reading was easy. And that is the ultimate goal of a judicial decision, a result that is understandable to the attorneys and judges from Concha Hocken to Conaquanessing, from Tyanesta to Tonkanic, and everywhere in between. Intellectually curious, she seized upon an opportunity to earn an LLM from the University of Virginia School of Law, all while maintaining a full judicial load on one of the busiest appellate courts in the country. Her significant in-depth legal experience, her highly acclaimed judgeship on the Superior Court, and her advanced legal education all positioned her for service on the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Her juris jurisprudence on our high court reflects a justice who applies the law fairly and impartially according to the cherished ideals enshrined in our Constitution and in the rule of law. In addition to her legal and judicial accomplishments, Justice Todd's life has been a model of servant leadership. She has promoted access to justice by innovative judicial initiatives, led numerous nonprofit and community organizations to aid the disadvantaged, served the arts to nourish the soul, and committed her time and considerable talents, including her beautiful soprano voice, to her church for the greater honor and glory of God. She has received countless accolades and awards and honorary degrees. To hear the story of Deborah Todd is to hear one of remarkable achievement, but the truly inspirational part of her story is how she accomplished what she did. Her trademark characteristics have been personal integrity and positive attitude in all she does. As one who has been privileged to sit on the bench alongside her, I have seen firsthand how she extends sympathy and a helping hand to attorneys who might be struggling with their argument, or to colleagues or friends experiencing a difficult time. Deborah enthusiastically helps others and carries their burdens. She is a consummate role model who instills civility, compassion, and kindness into our troubled world. Notwithstanding the high office she holds, the mantle of authority rests easy upon her shoulders. We at Pitt Law and her colleagues and friends could not be prouder of her. In advancing the cause of justice, 
she has carved a unique pathway that no one in the history of Pennsylvania has trod before as the first female Chief Justice of the oldest Supreme Court in the country. How will she do it? With a thirst for transfer transformational justice, with unending grace and dignity, and with a smile on her face and a song in her heart. Congratulations, Madam Chief Justice Todd, and hail to Pitt. Thank you, Judge Bose. And now please join me in welcoming Ken Gormley, president of Duquesne University. May it please the court and honored guests, I have the privilege of serving as the 13th president of Duquesne University, before which I served as a faculty member and dean of the law school. And I've studied and written about the Pennsylvania Constitution, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, and justices on this court for nearly 40 years. I've edited a thousand page treatise on the Pennsylvania Constitution so I could tell you about some of Chief Justice Deborah Todd's most masterful opinions, including legal women voters of PAV Commonwealth 178 Atlantic 3rd 737, <laughs> which has been recognized nationally as a model of thoughtful analysis on a challenging topic, partisan gerrymandering. I could talk about the unique role of the Chief Justice on this court, the oldest court in North America. I've been privileged to work with a half dozen of the Chiefs over the years, but today instead I'd like to share a few personal reflections. Deborah and I both started the practice of law together in the early 1980s, and even then it was clear she was destined for great things. She was a top-notch litigator, an upbeat and positive force within the legal community, and a mentor to literally hundreds of women and men in the profession. When I served as president, we created the Gender Equality Institute. In everything, she was a rock star. So when she was elected to the Superior Court and then to the Supreme Court in 2008, nobody was the least bit surprised. I was honored to give some remarks back then and spoke about some of her major accomplishments, but today I want to share a few things about our new chief that don't appear in her Wikipedia biography. Uh, first, as Alex mentioned, she's a talented singer and performer. In high school, she was a majorette who twirled fire batons. Do not try that at home, folks. <laughs> At the annual bench bar conference, Deborah was a veteran member of the ACBA Players. One time I remember her tap dancing with a black hat and white gloves. Another time she wore a purple sequin gown, dressed like one of the Supremes and sang, Stop in the Name of Law. Uh, all of us in the audience had consumed a few glasses of wine by then, but I can tell you she was really good. She's a trained mezzo-soprano, folks. In college, as Alex mentioned, she and her roommate Robin, who's playing the piano here today, auditioned for the Ringling Brothers Circus. They actually went to the Civic Arena on a Pat bus wearing leotards, danced their hearts out, and were offered contracts to go on the road with the Ringling Brothers Circus on their train. Deborah thought this was a great idea as a gap year before law school, but her mom, being a practical lady from Elwood City, said, no way, you're going to law school. Uh, she does still sing in her choir at church and for many charitable functions, but fortunately, her mom saved her from that circus train. <laughs> the other thing you should know about our new chief is that Deborah is all about family. She and her husband, Steve, are an inseparable team, all of you know, supporting vital causes together, like elder law and the veterans treatment courts across the Commonwealth, and her daughter, Alexandra, is truly the apple of Deborah's eye. As you saw, the poise and elegance of the mom have been inherited by her daughter, who's becoming a talented television journalist in her own right. Now, Lawrence recounted a similar story, but I, I just want to tell you, I remember being at a judicial conference in Philly when Deborah leaned over at lunch and said, Alex is texting me some three pairs of shoes here to decide which looks better. 
I held up my own phone because my daughter Maddie had just sent me and my wife pictures of some dresses to weigh in on. I said to Deborah, this is easy. As a dad, I picked the one that costs the least. Uh, Deborah rejected that advice. She zeroed in on the classiest pair of shoes and told Steve, call Alex and give her the credit card information. That is a good mom. Number one achievement in life. Let's hear it for Alex Todd here, ladies and gentlemen. So last year, last year I published my first novel, The Heiress of Pittsburgh, a sort of love letter to Pittsburgh. It's set in the little mill town of Swissville where I grew up, and we heard Andy Masick talking about the connection between Chief Justice Todd and Queen Aliquippa. But I think a more apt parallel may be that Deborah truly represents the heiress of Pittsburgh. She's the manifestation of the most beautiful qualities that have existed in these little towns dotting our three rivers where she was raised as the daughter of a steel worker. And she still reflects the values and the rich attributes that her mom, dad, grandparents, and family instilled in her from birth that one couldn't buy today, folks, for a million dollars. Faithfulness to family, friends, community, integrity, belief in hard work, caring about others above self. I have been writing about the Pennsylvania Supreme Court and its illustrious history for my entire career. I can state this with certainty. Deborah Todd is destined to serve with distinction to blaze new paths on this court as she's done her entire career and to do so with kindness, compassion, and empathy with the singular goal of doing the right thing, seeking to achieve justice in each case, regardless of politics or personal viewpoints, following scrupulously the compass of those two constitutions to which she earlier swore adherence. That's why I can assure you that Deborah Todd will be remembered in future history books as one of the greatest chief justices in the history of this court and the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you for the honor of being a small part of this historic and joyous occasion. Thank you, President Gormley. Uh, before we bring up our next two speakers, um, I do want to mention some additional special guests, including University of Pittsburgh Chancellor Emeritus Mark Nordenberg. We have bar leaders here who helped make this event possible, including Pennsylvania Bar Association President Jay Silverblatt and longtime Executive Director Barry Simpson, Allegheny County Bar Association President Eric Laughlin, Erica Laughlin and Executive Director David Blainer, and Philadelphia Bar Chancellor Mark Zucker. Thank you very much for all you've done for this program. In addition, we have a bevy of past PBA presidents and other leaders of the organized bar, along with leaders from organized labor, legal services organizations, and entities devoted to protecting and improving the rule of law. Too many to name. Thank you very much for your contributions. So our next two speakers coming to the podium together are Robin Goldsby and Margaret Melozzi, Chief Justice Todd's college roommates from Chatham College. Robin, who we heard play earlier, is a Steinway artist, a concert pianist, author, and composer based in Cologne, Germany. And Margaret is an actor, writer, creator, and producer of corporate films in Providence, Rhode Island. Please welcome Robin and Margaret. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, as you just heard and you may know, Robin and I were Justice Todd's college roommates <laughs> and now her lucky lifelong friends. Um, I like to refer to Robin and Deb as my better thirds. <laughs> so when Deb asked us to say a few words about her, we were thrilled, honored, elated. And then um, we were terrified panic-stricken and stymied. Uh, we have never really enjoyed being judged. <laughs> Not by this level of yeah, people. No, no. 
Um, how on earth could we possibly describe the wonder that is Deborah McCloskey Todd? We can't. We can't. We thought about singing. We thought about singing Everything's Coming Up Roses, but no piano on stage. And also, Robin and I, unlike Deb, can't sing we can't at sing. all. No. So we resorted to this. A quick spoken word, primer in rhyme, highlighting a few things that you may or may not know about Justice Todd from A to Z. <laughs> a is the grade she would always achieve. She's amazing, our angel. She's why we believe. B for baton, for we'll never forget that before she was here, she was head majorette. <laughs> C is for childhood heroes we loved. My hero was the girl from Uncle. My hero was Ginger from Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Deb's hero was Supreme Court Justice William Brennan. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> D is for daughter. She's beautiful, bright. Alex anchors the family with love and with light. E for equality. And let us all cheer. Our sister from Chatham, who brought us all here. Chatham, you in the house. F is for friendships, the old and the newer. Through triumphs and heartbreaks, there is no friend who's truer. G is for grateful. That's always Deb's view. H is for headlines, and she's in a few. Did you see today's paper? Yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, possibly the most telling headline was one, the one in Deb's hometown newspaper, the Elwood City Ledger. Date, August 8, 1974. The headline, Debbie McCloskey named Lawrence County Junior Miss. <laughs> Below the fold, in small type, was the single sentence, Richard Nixon resigns, story page eight. <laughs> it's all true. It's all true. <laughs> I for integrity, impressive, ideal, a heart made of gold, a resolve made of steel. J is for justice, her singular root, it's her goal, it's her grail, it's her constant pursuit. And K is for kite like the way that she soars. She's breaking glass ceilings and opening doors. L is for loved ones, and she's got plenty of those. The kin she was born to and the family she chose. We like to call them the Todd Squad. <laughs> Emma from McCloskey, the Mrs. and Mr the wonderful parents of Deb and her sisters. OK, so we personally knew Harry and Blanche. And Deb, they loved you to the moon and back, <laughs> to right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, opportunity knocks. Deborah answers the call. And whatever she does, it is good for us all. P is for Pittsburgh, where she makes her home, with a little time spent in a Harrisburg dome. We sound like Dr. Seuss. A little. Yeah. <laughs> OK. P. Oh, you did P. P yes. Pittsburgh. And yes. Speaking, I was P. Yeah. P uh, well, speaking of P. <laughs> yes. Here's one of Deborah's favorite jokes. Hey, Robin, where'd you get your pants? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Yeah, Pennsylvania. <laughs> the state that now has its first woman Supreme Court Chief Justice. Pennsylvania. <laughs> Q is for queenly, quick-witted, and quaint. She's quotable, quirky, a qualified saint. And R is for Rhonda. She works day and night, supporting our justice and fighting the fight. <laughs> S is for Stephen. He's even. <laughs> He's strong. The chorus to Deborah's spectacular song. T is for talent. And Debs are unreal. Mm -hmm. We won't add to this list. Things like making a meal. You know, she, she, she can't cook. <laughs> it's one of her, her few flaws. <laughs> you for unstoppable, unequaled, true blue. 
Deb, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And V is for Valiant, our own VIP. Victorious, vigorous, she is full of esprit. W, wonderful, whimsical, wow. <laughs> Her wisdom is worthy and what we need now. X for X Factor, the Justice Todd Flair. She's got vision and kindness and also good hair. <laughs> Z is the letter that starts Zelianople. The town that we love and we... Peg, the only thing I know that rhymes with Zelianople is Constantinople. Is that a town in Pennsylvania? I don't know. Is it? Is it? I don't know. Uh, maybe we should stop while we're, maybe. While we're ahead. <laughs> okay. Madam Chief Justice, how we love saying that. We hail from a noteworthy group of Chatham College women. But we always knew that you would be the one to make history. Your vision, intelligence, and fierceness are surpassed only by your compassion, loyalty to your friends and family, and hope for the future of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You were courageous back then. You are courageous now. Deborah embodies a unique bravery that visited the young women of Chatham College in the late 70s. She has carried it with her throughout her storied career, never forgetting the promises she made to herself, her community, her state. Now it might be a good time to quote that inspirational, legendary legal precedent, everything's coming up roses. <laughs> she had a dream about me and you, baby. She made it come true, baby, and she still ain't through, baby. Kindness, fairness, love, and justice. Madam Chief Justice, our Deborah McCloskey Todd, you are swell. You are great. You, you are, are here. here. Yeah. <laughs> That must have been quite a dorm room, I gotta say. <laughs> Sorry I missed it. Uh, we've now come to the presentation of the commission, which will be read by Quinn Summers, a junior at Texas State University and great nephew of Steve and Deborah Todd. Quinn. Greetings. Whereas a vacancy occurred for the Office of Chief Justice on, of Pennsylvania on October 1st, 2022, and whereas you are now serving by virtue of a commission from the governor as a justice of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, and are the justice learned in the law oldest in commission, and therefore by virtue of the constitution and laws of the said commonwealth became the Chief Justice. Therefore know ye, that in conformity to the provisions of the Constitution and laws of the said Commonwealth, in such cases made and provided, I do by these presents commission you to be Chief Justice of Pennsylvania. You are therefore to have and to hold the said office, together with all the rights, powers, and emoluments thereunto belonging or by law in any wise appertaining from October 1st, 2022, to serve so long as you shall remain a justice of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Given under my hand and the great seal of the state at the city of Harrisburg this third day of October, 2022. Thank you, Quinn. And now, the Honorable Christine Donahue will administer the oath of office to Chief Justice Deborah McCloskey Todd, accompanied by Steve Todd, daughter Alexandra, and son, Dr. Jason Todd.
believe that it is important to make one additional historical note. And I am adapting this history from a statement that then Justice Todd made before she swore me in as a justice on the Supreme Court. This is the first time in Pennsylvania history that a proud daughter of a steel worker is being sworn into office as Chief Justice of Pennsylvania by the proud daughter of a coal miner. Please place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Deborah McCloskey Todd. I, Deborah McCloskey Todd. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will obey, protect, and defend. That I will obey, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And that I will discharge the duties of my office. And that I will discharge the duties of my office. As Chief Justice of Pennsylvania. As Chief Justice of Pennsylvania. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone here. Thank you, Justice Donahue, for administering the oath of office. Today, my heart is full of joy and gratitude. Joy at arriving at this moment with all of you by my side, and gratitude for all of the strong and determined women who passed this way and paved the way and for all of you here today who have supported me and my family throughout this journey. I could not have done this without you. Ann Landers once said, <laughs> at age 20, we worry about what people think of us. At age 40, we don't care what people think of us. At age 60, we discover they haven't been thinking of us at all. <laughs> so thank you for thinking of me today. <laughs> now, I have so many people to thank, but before I begin, I would like to pay tribute to our former Chief Justice, Max Baer, who, as you all know, passed away unexpectedly at the end of September. Max was a wonderful colleague. He was a beloved friend to all of us on the Supreme Court, and he was a pillar of the judiciary, working hard through the ranks of the Allegheny County Common Pleas Court, where he was administrative judge of the family division, and then as a Supreme Court justice and ultimately as Chief Justice. Max Baer is someone we think about every day. 
Some of his staff are here with us, uh, Betsy, Michelle. Our sympathy still goes out to you. I know you're still mourning, as are we, and I just want to take a moment to reflect on how deep of a loss it was for us to lose Chief Justice Max Baer. Max worked to transition this administration to me going back probably a year before he passed away. It was known that he was to retire at the end of 2022 and I was to take over in January. His sudden and unexpected death accelerated that. However, he had already been working with me and his staff was working with my staff to make sure that it was a smooth transition. And it is because of that generosity that Max displayed along with the generosity his staff displayed that we have had a very smooth transition of Chief Justice administrations. I'd like to thank everyone who participated here today. Uh, first of all, Governor Josh Shapiro. What an honor for me to have been the person who swore him in. That was an inauguration for the ages. I've never been at a ceremony filled with so much joy and hope and expectation, and it was truly an honor to be a part of it. I'm equally honored that, that Governor Shapiro uh, made the time just uh, three days after taking the oath of office to come to Pittsburgh to be with us today and to give those inspirational remarks. I also thank Lieutenant Governor Austin Davis, who made some history of his own earlier this week as the very first African-American Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania. Congratulations. <laughs> there are so many distinguished guests here, and obviously I can't name all of them or we'll be here till 7 o'clock, but I do want to mention how grateful I am that former Governor Tom Corbett attended, that Senator Jay Costa, Senator Sharif Street, and all of the other Pennsylvania senators who are here attended, and that Speaker of the House, Mark Rossi, and all of the Pennsylvania state reps who are here. I really appreciate your taking the time to be with us today. Um, former Speaker of the House, Mike Terzai, I'm so happy that you joined us, and uh, all of our ceremony speakers and participants, it was just so wonderful to hear from you. Robin and uh, Peggy, I think, get the Academy Award for the performance, <laughs> but um, that is not unusual for them. They are uh, very accomplished women. But I do want to thank everyone who participated. Certainly, um, I mentioned Governor uh, Shapiro, but Commander Richard Manning, wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> not your average sheriff. <laughs> um, he both uh, entertained us with the bagpipes, which meant so much to me. Um, I tried to draw the line between it becoming too theatrical and becoming circus-like. I think, I think I stayed on the right side of the line, but the bagpipes added so much, and I, I truly appreciate Commander Manning's uh, talent. And then, of course, his national anthem rendition was just beyond words. Um, thank you so much, Rick. Uh, Rick's father, Judge Jeff Manning, is a longtime friend of uh, Steve and of me, and uh, he, I'm sure, is just so proud of everything his son has accomplished. I'd like to thank our court crier, Brian Minner, who always does a beautiful job, and of course, the Pennsylvania State Police Ceremonial Unit um, that was very, very impressive and very meaningful to me. Um, Chief Justice Emeritus, Tom Saylor, thank you for presiding. That meant a great deal to me to have you here today. Thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank Jeff Moulton, our court administrator. Um, as, as Chief Justice Saylor mentioned, uh, Jeff is a former 
Superior Court judge and now our state court administrator, and uh, he obviously is a great MC as well. So thank you, Jeff. Pastor Brown, thank you for coming today and for delivering that very inspirational invocation. Um, McKenna, who delivered the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, is our beautiful granddaughter, and uh, we are so proud of you, McKenna. Thank you for being here and participating today. I'd also like to uh, recognize other people who participated today. Dr. Andy Masich, who is about the greatest historian anyone could ask to speak, and I always tell Andy, if you had been my history professor, I would have majored in history. <laughs> You're so good at this, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time. I'd like to thank Councilman Bobby Wilson for uh, that wonderful proclamation, and I'm going to make the most of Deborah Todd Day. <laughs> um, to my dear friend, uh, uh, Judge Mary Jane Bowes from the Superior Court and also the president of the University of Pittsburgh, Law School Alumni Association, thank you for your kind words. You're such a, an eloquent speaker, and it was an honor having you here. Um, Jerry Lawrence, uh, a great speaker and one of my best friends in the world. Uh, I have to say I always have drawn the parallel that Jerry Lawrence's grandfather, mayor and then governor, David Lawrence, appointed Ann X. Alpern, the first woman ever to serve on the Sup Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, and now Jerry and I are best friends. <laughs> so I always got a kick out of that. <laughs> Ken Gormley, president of Duquesne University, past president of the Allegheny County Bar Association, I loved your Harvard red colors. Um, you looked like a cardinal, and not the bird, the religious one. And I thought uh, you were just fabulous, as always. You're quite a scholar, and it was a little bit of a left turn for you to address personal remarks to us today rather than academic and constitutional remarks, but you did manage to fit in the circus, didn't you? <laughs> um, as I mentioned earlier, Robin Malloy Goldsby and Margaret Malozzi, about the best college roommates one could ever have. And yes, we had a lot of fun in college, and I'm honored to have them here. Robin traveled from Germany. She's based in Europe as a concert pianist. And uh, Ro Robin came from Germany. Peggy came from Rhode Island. But still, you know, they both came a long way. <laughs> so thank you both very much. You're, you're brilliant, you're sweet, you're talented, and uh, you're very funny. So thank you. Um, also, I'd like to thank uh, uh, our great nephew, Quinn Summers, for reading the proclamation from the governor. I really appreciated that rendition. And to Justice Donahue, my dear friend, for administering the oath of office. Now, I'd like to thank, obviously, my family, um, particularly my husband, Steve Todd, who is uh, just the strongest, most wonderful person I've known. I always say it was my lucky day when I met Steve Todd. Uh, we are celebrating, just celebrated, our 33rd wedding anniversary, and uh, honey, I love you. could not have done any of this without you. You know that, but I'll tell you anyway. Um, our son, Dr. Jason Todd, is here, and I want to thank him for uh, doing the collaring with Alexandra. Jason's a professor at uh, uh, um, Xavier University in New Orleans, and he is uh, really a, an amazing, accomplished young man, and we're, we're so proud of him. Alexandra, obviously, you're the light of my life. Everyone knows that, and anyone who has ever met me knows about Alexandra because I can't stop talking about her. <laughs> She's just a, a wonderful, sweet, amazing daughter, and uh, I'm so happy that you found your niche as a uh, broadcaster, a morning TV anchor. I'm sorry it's in South Dakota. <laughs> and not Pittsburgh, but you're young. It's gonna work out. 
Um, finally, I would like to thank uh, everybody who participated today. We're going to hear from Chase Upchurch, uh, who is, that's a great name for a church pianist, isn't it, Chase Upchurch? <laughs> he is here and he's an extremely talented pianist. He'll be playing the uh, benediction along with vocalist Victoria Cush, who is an attorney here in Pittsburgh. So I have to thank all of them so much. You've really made this ceremony so meaningful to me. And for all of you in the audience, I wish I could mention every single person in the audience because you're here because you're my friend. You're here because you helped us and supported me, and nobody does this alone. You, you cannot run for office, you cannot succeed in uh, winning elected office without the help and devotion of many, many people, and uh, I'm just overwhelmed that so many of you managed to make it here today, so thank you. To our former Chief Justice, retired Justice Ron Castile, who flew from Florida and then drove from Philadelphia. You know, so you get double points for that. I, I truly appreciate your making the time to be here. And of course, to my former colleague, Justice Seamus McCaffrey, who also flew up from Florida to be here. Thank you so much. It means the world to me to have you here as well. Justice Cynthia Baldwin and Justice and President Judge Emeritus of the Superior Court, Corey Stevens, are also here, along with all these beautiful appellate judges and common pleas court judges and magisterial district judges and United States district court judges. You all look great in your robes. <laughs> <laughs> I loved watching you and I just, I'm so heartened that uh, you came here to support me and uh, I thank you very, very much for your friendship. I am not going to give a long speech, so that's, that's good news, I hope. I did just want to tell you that I am a proud um, product of Elwood City, graduate of uh, Lincoln High School class of 1975. And I'm so thrilled to have uh, some of my classmates from Lincoln High School here with me today. Um, I owe much of my success to my Lincoln High School classmates because in my senior year, they voted me most likely to succeed and I never wanted to let them down. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Abraham Lincoln once said, I'm a success today because I had a friend who believed in me and I didn't have the heart to let him down. And how true those words are. Um, never underestimate the, the value of a kind word or a vote of confidence. As I was growing up, I was blessed to have the unwavering support of my parents, Harry and Blanche McCloskey. Um, they did not live to see me become a judge, but they are ever present in, in my heart and in my memory. They were the most loving inspiring and uh, supportive parents that anyone could ever hope for. My mother was the sweetest, kindest person in the world, and she was a very strong woman. She encouraged me in every endeavor I ever had. Her faith and her strength have been my inspiration, and she was a model for the mother I was to become. I often look back to my childhood in the 1960s and the 1970s and think how remarkable my father was. Indeed, he was a man ahead of his time. My dad was a steel worker at JNL in Aliquippa, and he was an avid and accomplished sportsman and coach. Yet, for all of his efforts in athletics, he was somehow rewarded with three daughters who had absolutely <laughs> no athletic ability. <laughs> Nevertheless, he took great pride in each of us and reveled in our academic and musical accomplishments. He attended every parade and dance recital and choir concert and theatrical performance, and he truly believed that his three daughters, Mary, Nancy, and Deborah, were the best things since sliced bread. 
He took great pride in every time one of us was mentioned in the Elwood City Ledger. <laughs> um, I was concerned at some point as a teenager that my dad was disappointed in the total void of athletic accomplishment among his progeny. So I once offered to try out for the girls' varsity basketball team. <laughs> my dad had coached, among other things, girls' basketball for decades. Ever the realist, however, with a full appreciation for my limitations as well as my potential, my dad advised me not to attempt the team. <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, he said he was afraid I would hurt myself. <laughs> so I prudently heeded his advice and went on to last, less athletic and more academic pursuits. In a time period where it was still very, very common for young girls to limit their choices to more traditional paths, my parents, a steel worker and a homemaker, counseled me and my sisters that for our futures, the sky was the limit. They constantly encouraged our academic pursuits as well as our volunteerism and community involvement. My sisters took that lesson to heart. My sister, Mary Johnston, who is here with my wonderful brother-in-law, Bruce Johnston, became a first grade teacher in York, Pennsylvania, a career she enjoyed for 35 years. After retiring, Mary founded a child care center called Sunbeam Station, which we might as well say was named after Mary because she is full of sunbeams. She served as chairman of the board and faithfully guided that center for 20 years. And uh, that center provided child care to hundreds of children and it is still going strong. My other sister, Nancy Woods, is here with my other equally wonderful brother-in-law, Jim. Nancy was also a teacher and went on to launch and head the Beaver County Adult Literacy Action Program at Penn State for over 30 years. After retiring from that position, she began devoting all of her energy to her other mission, the Center for Hope, a multi-denominational faith-based charity in Ambridge, Pennsylvania, which provides food, clothing, and other services to over 800 needy individuals each year. Nancy serves as chairman of the board of the Center for Hope. Are you beginning to see a pattern? <laughs> they are um, truly the embodiment of the ideals uh, our parents raised us with. I chose a different path. I went into law largely because I became a file clerk at age 12 for a, a neighborhood, a lawyer in my neighborhood, Jim Keller, and he and his wife, Beverly, encouraged me at a very young age to pursue the goal of becoming an attorney at a time where, truthfully, I didn't even know women could become attorneys. <laughs> I only knew one attorney, and that was the person I was working for, and uh, the person I knew on television, Perry Mason, and so it was my uh, expectation that uh, men became lawyers. But they encouraged me, and really I owe them such a debt of gratitude for guiding me and for taking an interest in my future. Um, my enthusiasm for a legal career grew with each passing year. In my ninth grade civics class, when you have to write a paper on your career, I wrote my uh, paper that I wanted to be a lawyer, and I drew a little law office with a door that said, <laughs> Deborah Ann McCloskey, attorney at law. So I was convinced then that this was where we were headed. So I have so many people to thank for encouraging me along the way, um, mostly my husband, Steve, who I mentioned, uh, who's always by my side. Um, Steve is an accomplished attorney who had parallel legal careers. He um, served in the U.S. Army Judge Advocate General Corps, rising to the rank of Colonel. I am very proud of Steve's 29 years of military service, and I'm privileged that he and I have been able to work together to encourage our veterans' courts throughout Pennsylvania. So thank you for your service, Steve.
Steve's other career was with U.S. Steel Corporation, and we have a lot of buddies from U.S. Steel here today. Steve was an environmental attorney, and he rose through the ranks to become the Vice President of Law and Environmental Affairs. More than his success, though, in uh, his professional life, uh, he's a wonderful husband. So, again, thank you, Steve. Well, I'm going to... Uh, try to wrap this up because I know it's been a long afternoon already. I've mentioned Alex, I've mentioned Jason, um, our daughter Whitney who couldn't be with us today because COVID has invaded their household, um, is an attorney in Akron and she took after her father, I believe. So I think that's about it. I wanted to thank everyone who, uh, who participated today. I want to thank my staff, and I'd like them to stand up if they would. Um, thank you all so very much. Um, when I say I couldn't do this without you, I literally mean couldn't do this without you, so thank you. Um, I do want to highlight Rhonda. Uh, she's been mentioned earlier in the program. Rhonda is my chief administrative assistant. You heard from her earlier. Um, Rhonda and I were randomly assigned to one another when we were both new employees at Cohen and Grigsby here in Pittsburgh. I was a new lawyer there, having come from U.S. Steel, and Rhonda was a new secretary there. And just because of the um, happenstance of the dates we started with the firm, um, she was assigned to me and I was assigned to her and we began to work together. That was 35 years ago and Rhonda is still with me and I couldn't do any of this without her. This is as much her day as it is mine because she has worked so hard over the years in every endeavor we've had We've done it together, and Rhonda, I love you, and I appreciate you, and thank you for everything. I do believe, I'm, I'm a religious person, I, I have a very strong faith, and I believe that God looked down at me when I was a young attorney and said, this girl has potential, but she's gonna need some help. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how Rhonda came into my life, to, uh, make sure I stayed on the right track and to organize everything we ever did. Um, my other staff members, I'm not going to mention you all, my, my chief staff, uh, chief of staff, uh, Sean Linters, and uh, all of you, I just appreciate so much everything you do for me every day. So let me just close by saying that um, I'm really grateful for all of the women who came before me who helped us achieve the, the point we are today where Justice Donahue and Justice Mundy and I can serve as 50% of the uh, Supreme Court right now. It's, uh, it's those women's shoulders on whom, we, uh, on whom we walked and we really owe them a, a debt of gratitude. I am also very proud of our whole court. Um, these justices sitting beside me work so hard. I wish everyone could realize the job of a Supreme Court Justice and uh, how seriously these individuals take it. These are the finest judges you could ever work with and I am I'm just so proud to be a colleague of each of them. As ju judges and justices we uphold the rule of law, we protect our citizenry, from the threat of arbitrary will, we assure that every person who comes before our courts is accorded equal justice and that the right to vote in free and fair elections is safeguarded. We are the guardians. the guardians of our Constitution and I can assure you nothing is more important to us than that. And I want to emphasize because this often gets uh, misconstrued in the, in the media and in the public eye, we are not democratic justices, 
We are not Republican justices. We are justices of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. I want to end with just a, a brief word to young women who are pursuing careers in law. And uh, it's a lot different now than it was when, uh, when we were starting. But my daughter Alex alluded to this, and it's advice I've given her, and I do give this advice to young women. Since over half of our law school graduates today are women, I like to give this advice to them. Many years ago, the legal profession was a man's world. Thankfully, that has changed, and women are law firm partners, general counsel, judges, and Supreme Court justices. That is not news to you, but I wanted to point out that in striving for success, there is no reason to be anything other than who you are in order to make it in what is admittedly a tough profession where assertiveness and tenacity reign supreme. You can be tough without being a bully. You can be kind without being weak. There was a book published in 2004 entitled Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office. Well, as the newly installed Chief Justice of Pennsylvania, I can tell you, nice girls do get the corner office. <laughs> conclusion and as per tradition we'll call upon the uh, justices for a, uh, a few uh, brief remarks starting uh, with uh, Justice Robson. This is not a roast Justice Robson. <laughs> this, is my, this is actually my first chance at doing this so I'm, I thought it was a roast. Um, I'll, revise, I'll revise my comments Chief. Um, I think Alex really said it well, wow. I, I just can't think of a better word. I mean, you know, Chief, just look out at all these people that are assembled today to celebrate your, your life, your accomplishments, your career. Um, it's a testament to you. Um, so, you know, congratulations. Congratulations to Steve and the entire McCluskey Todd family. Um, I know you played a part in the success that the Chief has had. Um, that she loves all of you, and I can really feel the love that you have for her, so congratulations. This is a moment for you as well. Um, I did take copious notes from the speakers, so I can assure you there is fertile territory to explore during the reception um, <laughs> about the Chief's life and accomplishments. Um, uh, when, when Alex mentioned the circus, uh, I leaned over to Justice Wecht and wondered whether it was a metaphor. Um, <laughs> But then, uh, then President Gormley cleared that up for us, so I thought that was good. Um, I also think your fire twirling skills should come in handy as Chief Justice, um, so that should, that should work out well for you as well. Um, but but uh, you know, my final point is um, we heard a lot about this first, uh, and this first is certainly uh, worth celebrating. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But Chief, doing no small part to you, um, the female jurists that came before you, uh, Justice Donahue, Justice Mundy, uh, all the talented and accomplished female jurists that are in this room and across this country, and the young women lawyers that you are certainly inspiring, I have no doubt in my mind that you will not be the last female Chief Justice of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. <laughs> But I will say this, there is only one you. And looking back on my career someday as a justice of the Supreme Court, I will get to say that I served with the one and only Chief Justice Deborah Todd. So Thank congratulations. You.
Justice Mundy. Madam Chief Justice Todd, <laughs> we salute you. And by we, I talk about myself as your friend and your colleague, but more globally, I talk about people like me as the mother of a young daughter. Congratulations, and thank you for your inspiration. Blessings on this journey. Thank you. Uh, Justice Wack. Thank you, Chief Justice Emeritus Saylor. In the first hour of my remarks, <laughs> it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be here and participate in the Deborah Todd roast. I, I know now we can. I, I realize that I'm, there's very little that stands between me and the reception, so I'm going to be brief. I, I've been friends with Deborah Todd now for about 30 years, going back to her days at the fine firm founded by, by uh, Chuck Cohen and, and Bob Grigsby. And like many in the room, I recall those, those big shows at the Bench Bar Conference and how great Chief Justice Todd was. I mentioned to a reporter recently that, that amazing duet with Judge Kevin Flaherty uh, from the Phantom of the Opera one year and all the great performances that Deborah engaged in, and it was because of her reputation as a, as a great operatic singer that from time to time on the campaign trail, she was uh, commanded at the whim of whatever chairperson was presiding to have to perform and sing. Um, and, and that was um, a fun tradition because uh, in 97, when Chief Justice Todd was running for Superior Court, I was running for Register of Will, so I got to not only hear her speak frequently, several times a week, but hear her sing uh, on, a, on a frequent basis as well. And of course, Alex was a little girl then and uh, was lovely then as she is lovely now, and someday we'll all be able to see we, say that we knew her when she was still struggling through the blizzards of the Dakotas on her way to... <laughs> Good Morning America or the Today Show or whatever she's going to be anchoring someday. And I, um, I, I want to say that um, mention has been made of, of Chief Justice Todd's uh, authorship of the League of Women Voters Majority Opinion, which she authored as the senior justice in the majority on that case and the uh, seminal historical importance of that, of that case. And uh, all of you, I'm sure, are, are, are familiar with, and many of you have read closely the Chief Justice's opinion in that case. What you see is the tip of the iceberg. You don't see what's under the surface of the water and the role she played in it. A, a better metaphor than the iceberg would be a, a water polo game where you see the play above the water. You don't see the kicking and the gouging underneath the water. <laughs> um, and it's a, a tribute. Um, there is in so many cases and, and so many matters over the, the years and the decades that uh, Chief Justice Todd uh, comports herself with integrity and, and kindness and generosity uh, as well as legal acumen and brilliance. And I, I'm confident that in, in years to come, history will record the critical role that she has played and will continue to play on this uh, historical Supreme Court. Thank you for allowing me to be here and participate, Chief Justice. Justice Doherty. Madam Chief Justice, for many years I've sat in the back as a common police court judge and as a trial lawyer watching you. And in the last decade, I've been blessed to protect your flank. I guess the key to your successful leadership has been your gentle influence as opposed to a rough form of authority. I've noticed that through our years on this court, your influence on our court has gathered our complementary strength, skills, and experiences. And it has created an effect, I should say, it has created an effective force for good government. For that, I think not only we, your colleagues, are blessed, but I really do believe the people in Pennsylvania have no understanding yet 
of what a force you will be. Interestingly, it was the electoral process that brought us together as colleagues. But I'd have to say, it's been our breaking of bread. It's been your compassion. It's been our unified laughter when we're all together that I kind of feel, along with my admiration and respect for you, that it has become more than that. It's a true friendship. I have to tell you, for your years of friendship, for your years of counsel, past and yet to come, I thank you and I salute you with a full heart. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, Madam Chief Justice, Deborah, my friend, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is so fortunate to have your steady hand at the helm of the judicial branch of government. You are proof positive that intellect, hard work, and sheer perseverance is duly noted <coughs> with honor. Your position as Chief Justice of Pennsylvania is most importantly an indelible and constant reminder that women can and do lead. And I know that you will lead with grace and kindness because that's your character. I look forward to our continued service together, Madam Chief Justice and I look forward to continuing our friendship that's still <coughs> formed. Godspeed, Chief Justice. Thank you, Justices. I now want to introduce, uh, as the Chief has already mentioned, Pittsburgh Attorney and Soloist Victoria Cush, and Chase Upchurch for the presentation of the benediction on eagle's wings.
I ask that you all rise as the justices of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania recess. This special ceremonial session is adjourned. Thank you.